In this video, we're talking about my new favorite graphic design and video editing laptop that you won't have to sell your car or take out a lien against your house to pick up. All that's coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for graphic designers and creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing. Today we're talking about my acclaimed new favorite laptop for graphic designers. I was honored when the Acer team reached out to me and told me they wanted me to review the new Concept D3, a laptop that they say they have created specifically for creative professionals. They've actually made a whole lineup of computers for creative professionals. You can check that out in the description below. And if you do make a purchase through one of those links, as always, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. So what can this laptop handle? Can it handle the day-to-day -day tasks that I can throw at it as a creative professional. We're gonna dive into that right now. The first thing I wanted to look at was the usability of this laptop. If this is a laptop built for creative professionals, we are often on the go. So whether you're heading off to design school, finding yourself working for an agency, or you run your own freelance business, you're most likely an on the go person. For instance, I ride my bike to work every day. So I need a laptop that is lightweight and durable in case I take a spill on the road, which actually happened recently. And I think I broke my collarbone. So yeah, there's that. The Concept D3 has an anodized aluminum top cover and keyboard deck while wrapping the screen and bottom cover in a high quality plastic. Having used this laptop over the past few days, I can say that it feels solid, a well-built machine. The hinge is really snug and has a good smooth travel from opening to closing, and it can also stay open to 180 degrees if you're into that sort of thing. The keyboard is really nice. Uh, I love when a laptop keyboard is quiet and has good key travel. It is discreetly backlit, making it easy to spot those keys during those inevitable all-nighters that we pull from time to time. The trackpad. All right, now this is one of the areas in my reviews that I've historically dreaded talking about because most manufacturers completely overlook this piece of software and hardware. Uh, in the past, the only trackpad I have ever celebrated is the MacBook Pro. I am grateful to say that the Acer has officially changed this for me. Uh, the trackpad on the Concept D3 is, is truly wonderful. It is the only trackpad that comes close to the MacBook Pro. So well done Acer. I'm very impressed with the trackpad. It's got good gestures. It's got really good sensitivity. The click is nice. Compared to my Dell XPS 15, which I've historically raged about, ah, it's wonderful. I love the Acer Concept D3 trackpad. So great work. The model that I'm reviewing comes with a full HD matte display. It tests out at 100% DCI P3, which is comparable to Adobe RGB. If you're curious about the exact differences, I've placed an article in the description below. Another win for Acer in their pursuit to make a well-crafted machine for creative professionals. I'm all about those ports, about those ports, no lightning bolt. Okay, that was, I might not even put, I'll probably put that in there, anyway. Okay, so the ports on the machine. They have almost every port that I need outside of one port that they've left out. And I'm not really sure why, but they did. And they left out the SD card slot. Now, since this machine has so much going on for it, I'm not going to say it's a killjoy, but I really was surprised that they did not have the SD card slot on this machine. Now, if you do want the SD card slot, they make a Concept D5, which has it. Uh, but the Concept D3 comes with an HDMI port, USB-C, uh, two USB 3.0 slots, a USB 2.0 slot, audio jack, and network port. So it's a well-equipped computer as far as the ports are concerned outside of the missing SD card slot. So I hope that they maybe decide to add that later on. So we'll see. All right, now for my favorite part, let's put this laptop to the test against the day-to-day -day tasks of graphic designers, video editors, and photographers. I'm gonna pull up the specs on the screen for the model that I am reviewing. The model that I'm reviewing has the Intel 9th Gen six core i7 9750H, has 32 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA Quadro T1000, and it has 512 gigs of solid state hard drive. So a very well equipped computer. And if you're curious about the exact uh, specs and pricing that breaks down even farther into like what the screen is and what the keyboard is made out of and all that, you can head down into the description below, grab that link. Okay, so those specs, how do they actually help this computer perform? So I'm gonna run through some tests here, gonna make this quick, 
save you guys some time and help you make a qualified decision. The first test, I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip. This is my classic test. I put it into Premiere Pro and export it out at 4K. It does that in six minutes and 53 seconds, which beat the latest and the greatest Dell XPS 15 right there. That's why I'm saying this, this computer is edging out my historically favorite computer. What if you wanna save a little time and you wanna export that clip to 1080p? Well, it does that in two minutes and 23 seconds. Again, faster than the newest Dell XPS 15. I'm trying not to be a fanboy, but I'm just, I'm sincerely impressed. All right, now I'm gonna take a Premiere Pro project and render out some of the motion graphics within it. And I have 3,300 frames that rendered out in one minute and 53 seconds. So very fast compared to a lot of the computers that I've reviewed on this channel. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is take 100 raw photo files, put them into Photoshop and open them up in Camera Raw and see how long that takes. It took 12 seconds on this computer. Now, a few iterations ago of the MacBook Pro, that would take me two, three, four, five minutes to open up. And that can kill your workflow if you're trying to get things moving and get things done. Um, so that's something really to think about. Consider this, if you are on a product shoot or you shot a wedding, you could have three, 4,000 photos. So that raw import to start editing in camera raw could take you 20 or 30 minutes if you have a slower computer. So this is a really good test to consider for your workflow. All right, and the next part of that is say you wanna then go and save out a thousand of those photos uh, to then send to your client. Each raw photo that I boosted up to two gigs and then exported it out at full quality JPEG just to test and put a lot of stress on the machine, it did that save out in 13.15 seconds. And if you're doing that times a thousand, it's not gonna take too long, but if you're gonna be doing this with a computer that's a little bit slower, that could really kill your workflow as well. Another big concern for this computer, and I'm sure y'all are wondering, is the battery life. What kind of battery life does this machine get? Well, they're claiming about 10 to 12 hours of battery life, and that's with the full HD screen. However, we all know that graphic design tasks like Photoshop and Design Illustrator, and then video editing tasks like Premiere Pro, pull a lot more stress on the computer and spend a lot more battery. So honestly, I'm gonna say you're gonna get about five, maybe six hours of battery life with this computer. That's gonna be with the power turned down, and we have you know most of the programs closed and just have that one program you're working on open so you don't take too much of that RAM and pull away a lot of the performance of the computer, which drains the battery life. Again, if you're curious about the exact specs or pricing of this model, you can head down into the description below, grab that affiliate link. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com and thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you here on the next episode.